on the first series, the thing I remember really clearly is the time and the passion that was spent over the script, the detail, every tiny detail, cabbage versus cauliflower, what's funnier, the name of Baldrick, the name of Edmund, plus the scale of it, You're never being frightened of something massively ambitious, never being frightened to change, turn around and take the whole production upside down, everybody having to change everything because they thought they could find something better and funnier. And it was a fantastic lesson to learn that you just keep going, you never think, well, I've got that now, that's quite funny, it's got to be even funnier. Which smell of persuasion with Frank Finley? I made a terrible mistake that night, that on that, and it was a Friday night, and my one of my other responsibilities was clearing up afterwards and making sure everyone had gone. And I thought that Frank Finley had gone home with one with the person that normally picked him up, and in fact he hadn't, and he was left behind on this snowy location. It was really snowy, and I was already back in the hotel having a brandy, and some of the makeup people came in, and they'd stopped. They'd found him wandering in his costume on the way back to the hotel, and I thought my career was over. <laughs> Rowan just inhabited the character, and Rome became Edmund Blackadder, so that you... I, I, when we went to riding lessons, I took him for when he was learning to ride, and um, he, you could see him becoming Edmund, just learning how to think like Edmund. Do you, do you remember about the way he looked? The discussion of the codpiece. I remember a lot of discussions about sizes of codpiece and what was the best size and who should have the best codpiece. Rowan was incredibly focused, um, really knowing exactly what he, what he needed, scrupulously plight, um, and busy, busy thinking, busy doing his work, um, not demanding attention, just, just getting on with his work, really. Some of the ambitions of it were perhaps a little bit bigger than the size of the studios we had to fit them into, so big sets, big banqueting halls, wonderful costumes, great big feasts, quite different to the more traditional sitcom, which is a terrace house, perhaps open sets, facing an audience, long debates about whether to have an audience or not, the advantages, the disadvantages of studio laughter, and it was felt very firmly that we shouldn't have one, which, of course, from some of the executives within the BBC there was anxiety about, because that was breaking the norm, and would people know what was funny? I think that there were certainly times during the first series where you'd turn up and it felt more like a huge, great feature film than a BBC comedy, uh, great big chunks of things to get hold of and to get on top of and stunts and animals and big, you know, burning Frank Finley at the stake effects or the plague, lots of makeup effects as well. So we built a whole village for the Witch Miller Persuivant um, and the whole village and the people in the village and the animals in the village and we set fire to it. So we weren't um, pussyfooting around. As the AFM, I was lower down the rungs, and my the way I used to work was to try and anticipate what Richard or John or Rowan um, might want next, and try and be prepared. But for, you, it was impossible. And there was one night when we were tucked up in our little hotel in Annick, and about three in the morning, under the door came a little note saying, "Dearest Hilly Billy, please could we have twenty black Jacob sheep on location tomorrow morning? Um, that would be lovely. We'll love you forever." kisses you think no how how do i find any sheep let alone black sheep anyway somehow you do